welcome back to Sequins. This is um, a show where we talk about Clubland, uh, the marvellous world of working men's clubs. I am Andrew Haunt, and the extremely handsome gentleman you see to my side is Martin Horn, otherwise known as Martin Andrews, uh, back in Clubland. So we're going to carry on with the story of your experiences in Clubland. So what I want to know in this episode, and what I'd like to talk about in this episode, is what it was like when you first went out on your own. So you were in bands, you were in trio, duo, and then yourself. What was it like when you first started out on your own? Very first, uh, I bought myself a PA, uh, rang a few agents up, uh, had a couple of auditions. Yeah. And one of the agents I rang up um, said, yeah, uh, can you do me Sunday lunchtime at this club in Sheffield? Okay. And I thought, well, I can't say no. So I went to this club, frightened to death, all on my own, and explained to organist and drummer what had happened, that I'd never done it on my own before. Mm -hmm. um, and they said, don't worry about it, kid, we'll look after you. Um, They'll not listen to you anyway, but it being Sunday dinner time. <laughs> so I went and did it, and that was my first paid gig. And I thought, well, I've done it now. Yeah. And and the agent that I'd rung up about that, I think he was struggling for somebody just to fill in for that one. Yeah. That that gave me that little um, bit of encouragement that I couldn't say no. So I had to do it. So I was thrown in at deep end, if you like, rather first than trying to fill this one make it a lot easier once you've done that first one. That's right, yeah. Were there many uh, there? Yeah, there were quite a lot. And they did listen, actually. I, I made a few mistakes and just carried on um, making mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Uh, and, and never stopped. <laughs> and it, it was, yeah, I just make mistakes all the time. It... Uh, the agent that I'd rung up then, I'd never worked for him. Mm. But because I'd done that, he gave me a bit of work. That's and good. So I thought, well, he looked after me, I looked after him. And then um, other agents that I rung up did a, one or two auditions. And the uh, first audition that I did, I was halfway through my second song. And I realised... It's only me here doing this, and they're all watching. <laughs> and that would have been unnerving. Just, and then I thought, well, just get on with it now. And uh, it really it took off from there. And I thought, well, I liked it. And obviously, I weren't too bad because I got quite a bit of work. Mm -hmm. So then I started pushing for a bit more and got a bit more. Um, but the actual experience at first one were. Well, like I said, I was thrown in at deep end. And it was a bit unnerving. And I, I really didn't know what to do, what to expect. And I just got on with it. And I thought, well, that's okay, that. Uh, like I said, they did they did seem to listen. They were okay. Everybody was fine. Mm -hmm. uh, and I thought, well, I like this. So, like I said in previous uh, interview, that... Uh, I enjoyed their company and oh, they enjoyed my company and we, we joined together and that's that's yeah. how I always looked at it. And then um, after a while, I'd, obviously I'd, I'd always played guitar. Yeah. All, all, all the way through I played guitar and sang. Mm -hmm. And um, somebody uh, rang me up quite out of blue and said, uh, can, you, can you stand in for me? I've got a a gig in a pub and I need somebody to stand in because I can't do it for whatever reason. He says, I yeah. cannot do it. I said, well, I've never done it before. in a pub with no backing, no anything, just right, singing okay. and oh, <clears throat> nothing. And I said, well, I said, I'm not really ready for that. He says, well, please. He says, I'm asking you, like a friend of a friend, if you like. He says, I'm, I'm more or less not begging you, but please, will you do it? Yeah. He says, you'll be all right. He'd obviously seen me. 
So uh, I said, go on then. I think, it, I don't know if it was that same day or day before. And I just wrote a load of songs down and took all my gear. I said, I'd got my PA and uh, me, obviously I was doing clubs as well. Mm. So I'd got all my gear, uh, no tapes or anything like that. And then I, I just went to this pub and said, uh, you know, I'm, I'm Martin, I'm standing in for whoever. Yeah. And they said, yeah, all right, set up over there. And I just got on and did it, just with my guitar. And that way, just with guitar. guitar. And Lovely. I thought, this is good, because I could get more work then as well, because pubs were wanting people. Yeah. So I got in and I thought, well, this is good. And I obviously, I enjoyed that they take me on and think I were okay. And uh, so I tried to be okay with everybody. And How long did make it take to start using backing tracks? Oh, then I got into backing tracks, yeah, because, um, well, everybody was starting using them. They're not, you know, for small menus, uh, pubs and that, before it went into clubs. Um, and I got I got myself a tape recorder, yeah, uh, um, a, a backing tape thing. Yeah. Bought a couple of tapes just to try. And uh, I was doing a gig just making guitar and I explained to everybody I said what I'm going to do now I'm just going to try a couple of songs uh, on my tape deck and, and let me know please let me know what it's like oh the best way to well, try it yeah well in the were left but I'd finished he said he went back he was landlord no <laughs> it's a bit cleaner uh, yeah um and yeah, it, that worked okay. So I did a few more, and then I played guitar, then did tapes, and then uh, I could go, I could do any with, with tapes or with guitar and tapes, mm -hmm. just tapes, or go with full backing, or like go anywhere if you like. Did you find that got yourself? Uh, did you get more gigs from doing it? To, in, yeah, offering so, different ways to do it. Obviously, that that were uh, uh, a a big experience all doing different places. I played um, biggest clubs to smallest pubs yeah. and every between, anyhow you like, which I thought were quite good. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I really enjoyed it. I really, really enjoyed it. Good. And all how long do you think it took you to figure out a set to how what what worked and what didn't? Was it a learning process, uh, figuring out what people would like and get on with? Well, uh, yeah. Well, what, what I did, I started out with doing songs that everybody knows anyway, mm -hmm. uh, which, and then put a couple in that nobody liked, you know. <laughs> <laughs> then I put a few more in that nobody liked. Um, just, just kept putting different ones in and think what I'd, what I'd like, what people would like, what I'd like. What were new, what weren't so new, what were popular, and things like that, and just put different ones in, and but keep doing oldens as well, <clears throat> you know, oldens and new ones, and mix them up, and uh, I don't yeah. know about it really. I remember a lot of photos oh. from uh, where you're on stage where you'd got the uh, the old double neck. Did people think that was quite a nice sight to see? A bit of a, a novelty with having oh, the double yeah. neck. Neck guitar, yeah. Mm. That was a good guitar. That did you uh, use both? It was, it was a 12 string and a six string, wasn't it? Yeah, 12 and six, yeah, yeah. Using was, was both. One, one thing I didn't like about it was changing, putting new strings on because you've got 18 strings to tune up, then, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, god, yeah, that's the thought. I've never, I've never really strung a uh, double neck. Crikey, well, I, I used to nightmare on that. Every weekend, work Saturday and Sunday, and then uh, I change change my strings Monday to Friday. <laughs> <laughs> now, a big a big part of uh, what I remember from your uh, your club days, and I, I have to bring this up, is your shirts, <laughs> your shirts, and the trousers. Those stage outfits were just absolutely Im immaculate. Now, were they from some kind of club turn superstore you know uh, <laughs> like Argos for turns. 
some of them, yeah, I thought Churns August, yeah. <laughs> uh, there used to be a place, uh, Doncaster Way, something like that, uh, that did all stage wear. Yeah. And you'd go there and they, they could kick you out and really sort you out. And made to measure everything, you know, leotards and all that. <laughs> I remember all the shirts looking flammable. They were they all yeah. like nylon well, and polyester and stuff. Well, what? Well, yeah, they they were probably uh, not fantastic material. They looked good. Yes, so that's 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 all you're bothered about, really. It looked good. They were itchy and all that. I always thought uh, they looked but, good. Uh, when I did uh, proper clubs, uh, I, got, I got into uh, Nelly used to uh, wash and iron my clothes. Yeah. And people used to remark how nice and clean my shirts and trousers were. And uh, I used to have a dicky ball, all that. I remember that. And, uh, Pale blue one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I, that, and that was part of it. And people would say, you know, haven't you got a jacket? You know, um, Back in as you're going on stage, haven't you got a yeah. jacket? So now I've got a shirt. And then people said, I how nice the shirts uh, that were washed and, and how clean I looked. Perfect. Just like me acts, they were lovely and clean. That is some that is true. I don't remember you ever yeah. doing uh, you never you never did like a blue act or anything. Um there was I remember you sometimes, you know, doing some jokes and little digs here and there that were that were sort of carry on in their in their humor a bit postcard and um yeah. that was really nice because it didn't exclude yeah. anyone <laughs> you know that's what i that's what i found with yeah. the um, most turns that i've seen with you because i've seen i've seen a lot with you as well as seeing you perform a lot of times um i noticed that when they were when some of them were a bit risky it seemed to turn some of the audience off, you know, fully grown adults that are all right with, that are all right with hearing a bit of bad yeah. language, rude jokes and so on. But I did find that some of the audience seemed to get turned off by people that went a bit far with it. It seemed to be a much more of a, um, it seemed to get a much more of a connection to people if it was more kind of variety, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's what I found anyway. Uh, well, I, I always thought that, you couldn't really start swearing and uh, things like that. So I never did. It just just like silly jokes, if you like. Yeah. Not, not silly jokes, but funny jokes. When did all the props start coming in? Like the uh, the the big the giant flat cat for uh, match talk men. Oh, uh, I saw that. Well, you were with me, I think, at Blackpool. Yeah. And I I saw that, and I thought. I'm having that. I'm going to do match stalk men and match stalk cats and dogs with that on. And I did that ever since. Now, was it my imagination or did you randomly put on the, the big rubber ear, the big plastic ears and do and do an entire song completely seriously just with the rubber ears on? Have I made that up or did you do that? I once did something like that, yeah. I have a vague uh, memory of you singing a ballad with Oh, yeah. Well, I could have got them out. Huh? I've got them somewhere. <laughs> yeah, you came up on Messenger that day and you'd got them on, and it was just like, oh, fantastic. I remember it so well. <laughs> was there yeah. any in those early years when you were early days when you were starting out on your own? Were there any times where you figured, oh, I've bitten off more than I can chew with this? Yeah, that got towards the end of it. Uh, when I just before I finished. Oh, when, because, when I was around, yeah. But oh, yeah. Working, weren't you full-time as well? Working full-time. Uh, and I was saying, because, because I could more or less go and do anywhere, I was getting lots of work. So I work in two full-time jobs, if you like. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, I didn't enjoy my job, but it's had a pension. Yeah. But enjoy me singing, you know, me entertaining. I didn't have a pension. Uh, and I didn't have a pension. And I was doing that much. Uh, something had to go. So that that went eventually, which I was sad about. Um, it never left you, though, did it? 
Well, I can still get up and still get up and entertain and things like that. But then the job that I got, my full time job, we lost his pension then anyway. Oh, <laughs> but like with this um, COVID and that now, there's a, there's not a lot of people not getting any work because of, no. obviously of entertainment uh, venues aren't open, are they? No, and uh, that's one of the worrying things. Is I mean. A lot of clubs are already on the backsides before all this happened, just because yeah. of an, an ageing demographic, I guess, and people just not being aware of what they offered. Because it's like they, I'm currently reading that book on clubs, not just not just beer, more more than beer and bingo, not just beer and bingo, and clubs always since the early days offered more than just that because they were more than pubs because they offered like reading rooms or they offered space for daytime stuff like aerobics classes or you know um people to get together and do stuff so i, I do think it's a shame that they're falling by the wayside and i think it's something that would benefit people going forward i mean create more of a community spirit they were always quite community oh. focused weren't they yeah 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 that's right yeah. Oh, i loved it loved every minute of it which pub was that first one in then in sheffield do you remember yeah. Is it Fagin's uh, or something like that? <laughs> oh, it was Magpie at Low Edges. The Magpie at Low Edges. Fantastic. Yeah. You played that Fagin's, was... didn't you? I'm sure you told me you'd played at Fagin's. Uh, I don't think I played there, but I used to know him. I used to work across the road when I was a lad. Very a uh, character. And uh, Joe Fagin, I, he were... He hadn't got a sense of humour at all. <laughs> Um, but he was a very nice chap. Yeah. And I worked across the road and we used to go across on a Friday dinner time and uh, have a pint with his dinner. I've got a lot of good memories of stuff that happened after you, you finished it. And uh, as with the as with the previous episode, I, um, I'm going to finish with a little story. And uh, one that I, I like to tell people about, about you was one of the Pen Nook, which used to be your local. Yeah. And there was a... Um, there was a singer on. I don't remember who, what it, what the guy's name was, but he was he was doing. It was a bit more raucous than just like a, a few jokes and some songs and like a, a nice bit of entertainment. And he was running around the place. Now the Pennock was a pub that fit maybe I don't know seventy or eighty in max if it were packed. You don't mean you don't mean low woods, do you? No, oh, I'm, I'm cool. sure this was Pennock. I'm oh, sure this was Pennock. Uh, and he were he were running round. He were doing like a, a Tom Jones song or something. It weren't Delilah, but it was it was something quite. Um, it had a, it had a good tempo to it. And he were running round venue, sticking the mic in people's faces. And there's loads of people around. And you're going, oh, I can't, I can't. And he's laughing and he's making a bit of a laugh and a joke and embarrassing people. And he came to you. And his night got ruined. It was brilliant. I loved it. I see. <laughs> You're making all these people feel right awkward. And you put a microphone in your face. And what did you do? I must have be a teenager in love. That was it. Was that it? You remember it? You but took it, the mic off him. And, and, and then I carried on from there then when he done that. <laughs> Not only that, you got up on you got up on seating and had one foot on the table at one point. And yeah. everyone's just like, yeah. And he's just like, oh, the joke's been. Buggered now, aren't they? Oh dear. <laughs> ah, well. I love it that you've always kept it. You kept it when we were on um, when we were on holiday in Spain. We made friends with turns and you'd get up and do a few. And yeah. do you remember um was it the Tropicana, the, the country and western pub? Oh, oh and we, I'd, I'd been playing there. Yeah. And then one night and uh, we were walking past one night. Yeah, we weren't even going in. We weren't going, no, we were just walking past and just have a look. You're looking, don't you? Having a wave, are you? And uh, the fella who was playing stuck his head out of the window and he went, Help! Yeah. <laughs> he remember that? Shout and help. As he yeah. went in, I remember so, you played bass, so, didn't you? I played bass that night, yeah. And you'd yeah. never played bass before, had you? Once. I played it once, once before. And I, yeah. I remember about 14, 15, I remember thinking, my dad's brilliant. Because he's just saying, right, what key is this? Oh, this is in C. 
this, this one's in C, so you were just playing around C. And I was like, that is awesome. Like, that's really, really impressive. And they were playing in F, weren't they? Yeah, they were. They said, we didn't know F in C. <laughs> hey. And on that note, <laughs> oh, I think now that brings tonight's chat to, to a close. Just, Thank you, Dad. I'm just looking at my reflection. Yeah, does it look I've got no teeth in with my nose? Shadow in my nose. <laughs> no, you look fantastic. Uh, like oh, unlike in the previous one where it looked like you're on your deathbed. Well, uh, <laughs> but, well I've died once or twice in clubs as well anyway. Well, I think that's part and parcel of it, isn't it? <laughs> that happens to everyone. But do you think do you think dying now and again improves your performance at the next night? Oh, definitely. You've got to try twice as hard then, aren't you? Yeah. You can't, you can't let it go. Absolutely. You've always got yeah. to keep on doing it. Uh, well, thank you very much, Dad. I appreciate it. So I'm going to go and get another one of these and uh, pop this up on the channel. All right, love. And uh, yes, thank you ever so much. We'll catch up again soon. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Thanks for, thanks for watching another episode of Sequins, everyone. We said bye bye to our viewers, Father, and then we'll call it a day. Nice night, yeah. all. Bye. See you later. Bye.